Hello. Today I'll be um, discussing substrates that are good and bad to use, specifically for reptiles, and well, mainly for leopard geckos because it was requested on my last video about my bioactive leopard gecko cage that I should do a video discussing sand specifically and whether sand is good or bad. And there's a lot of different opinions on this. And mainly what I think is, is that you should research where your animal comes from in the wild and what types of soil they would live on. What, and then for other things like plants, what types of plants they would be around them and just different things like that. So you have the most naturalistic setup for your lizards. And so, um, specifically talking about sand, there are two main types of sand that I feel that I should talk about. The first one being play sand. Now, if your animal does live in a super sandy environment, which leopard geckos do not, just in case if you're wondering, they actually live on very rocky substrates. That's why I have made the excavator clay for the substrate. But anyways, for um, play sand, sometimes, depending on what type of play sand you get, there can be a few different things in it that are bad. Just, you have to check and make sure that your play sand is okay for animals and stuff, and just check and see what's all inside of it. And the other thing, one other type of sand that I'd like to talk about, I didn't really talk a whole lot about the play sand, but for another sand that I'd like to talk about is the calcium sand, or whatever it's called. Um, a lot of people, there's two main opinions on it. One is that there, it's good because if your animal happens to eat some on accident, or it's hunting, then they get calcium in their system. And another thing is, or another opinion, is that it's bad. And the reason why it's bad is because calcium sand is made out of something called calcium carbonate, which is found in limestone. And another thing about calcium carbonate is it's also a main ingredient in Tums, the medicine. And basically what it does, if your animal does eat it, it does give them calcium. But the bad part is, is that if your animal eats calcium sand, the um, calcium carbonate actually neutralizes stomach acids, which, if you don't know what that means, it basically means that it makes your animal not digest its food properly, which swallowing sand already does. So if it does swallow it, yes, it does get calcium, which is good, but it's not going to be able to di digest the sand properly, and then it's going to get impacted most likely. If it does eat a lot of it, it will get impacted. And a lot of times with animals, especially um, leopard geckos and bearded dragons and things like that, mainly lizards, what happens is if they don't get enough calcium or other minerals in their diet, they will actually look towards the substrate that they're on and dig around in it and try to eat it, hoping that they can get some in their system, which if you have your animal on calcium sand, it's going to realize that that's a source of calcium and it'll eat a ton of the calcium sand because it wants more calcium and then it'll get it won't be able to digest properly um the main reason or wait a minute the main reason why impaction happens is actually not because your animal is just living on that substrate and so automatically it's going to get impacted but it's actually because of poor husbandry um, what happens is, for reptiles, in order for them to digest their food that they've been eating, they have to go somewhere warm, somewhere hot. And so, if you don't provide the right temperatures that your animal's supposed to be on, if you don't give them the perfect temperatures that they have to live on for their basking spot, then, or, or hot spot, depending on what animal, because leopard geckos aren't supposed to have a basking spot, but rather a hot spot. But anyways... If their hot spot or basking spot isn't the right temperature, then 
their stomach isn't going to be able to digest the food right because reptiles are cold-blooded and what happens with cold-blooded animals is that they get a lot of their energy from the sun and so or whatever heat source it happens to be for in captivity we always tend to give our animals either a heat light or a heat pad and so if they don't have the right temperature for their heating area or for their heated area then they're not going to be able to digest their food properly and with the calcium sand giving or made of calcium carbonate on with both of those things on top of each other the not the right um, hot spot and with the calcium carbonate in their stomach they're not going to be able to digest their food right and then if your animal goes down and starts finding it as a calcium source and starts eating the sand like not well if it starts eating the sand on purpose without like just missing a cricket or whatever you're feeding your animal then what's going to end up happening is you probably will have an impacted animal and then you'll have to either have to take it to the vet it'll be a ton of money and your animal will go under a ton of stress or your animal is going to pass away and so um, sand especially calcium sand isn't really such a great idea. If you do use play sand, that is a pretty good option. If it's made out of the right stuff, not a whole bunch of chemicals or anything, then that is, can be a good option for an animal that does live on sand. If your animal doesn't live on sand, don't put it on sand, because it's not going to end good. And so if, you, if your animal does need to be on sand, then you can put it on sand. But if you do put it on sand, please put it on play sand because it's not made out of calcium carbonate and so your animal isn't going to have problems digesting their food at least as much as they would if they were on calcium sand. Now, um, one other thing that I'd like to say is, is that the reason why you would put your animal on a loose substrate such as sand or whatever or a uh, mixture of sand and dirt or coconut fiber or bark or gravel or whatever it happens to be the reason why you would do that is because your reptile might like to burrow, especially desert animals, just because they tend to not have as many um, much shelter as a tropical animal would that lives out in jungles and things where there's trees. So desert animals tend to like to burrow, and if you have your animal on reptile carpet, newspaper, or paper towel, then your animal's not going to be able to burrow. and they're not going to be able to dig, and it's not going to look as nice in my opinion. Um, now that leads me right into something else, is reptile carpet and paper towels, newspapers, things like that. Now, first off, they don't look as good, <laughs> which that's not such a good thing because you could always put your animal's health first. Don't worry about whether it looks good or not. Put your animal's health first. And so... With those options of substrate, you're not always your animal isn't going to be able to burrow and dig around like they like to in the wild. And like in this setup, in my bioactive setup, I have um, darkling beetles, which are the adult forms of mealworms, living in here, and they clean up the feces and dead plant matter. And so, with my animals, my one leopard gecko, I have two leopard geckos in here. And only one of them actually eats crick or not crickets. Only one of them actually eats mealworms. Her name is Zippy. She's a blizzard leopard gecko. And so one thing with this type of a setup where it has soil at the bottom rather than newspaper or whatever, my animals are able to burrow down under the or dig around and not burrow, but dig around in the substrate in search of the mealworms. And then once they dig them up they can eat some and that's just how it would be in the wild, is, is that your animal would go around hunting and scavenging for food. And so, whenever you do put paper towels, reptile carpet, and newspapers and stuff down as the carpet, or as the substrate, they're not able to burrow or dig, and it's not as naturalistic. Another thing is that with, not with, well this one's with newspaper, is that newspapers, the dye on the newspaper, can sometimes be harmful to your animal, and it can also stain the skin of your animal, but that's not too bad because whenever your animal sheds, 
the stain skin will come off and then there'll be a bright new lizard and so it still is not that good though because your animal sometimes the dye isn't healthy and with paper towels um this one specifically for larger lizards that are desert lizards like bearded dragons specifically just because this is where i'm getting my example from is, is that there was this one bearded dragon that was in search of nutrients from the ground like i said with the calcium how they'll dig around and eat different minerals for nutrients this bearded dragon was digging around trying to find it but it was on top of paper towels and so it started i'm not sure if that's exactly how it went but it was either hunting and missed a, the insect that it was feeding on or it was trying to find nutrients in the ground but anyways the bearded dragon ended up eating the paper towel and it ate the entire paper towel at the bottom of the cage and the animal had to go to the vet to get the paper towel taken out and it was just disgusting and I can tell you that's not healthy if your animal starts eating straight up paper towel that's not good you need to take your animal to the vet I'm not saying that, that will happen I'm just saying that it has happened before and so I wouldn't chance it and another thing is it doesn't look as nice and so uh, a few other substrate options are well one other is dyed sand like sand that'll be blue or sand that'll be pink or green or yellow or whatever a lot of times the dye can be very well this just like newspaper the dye in the sand can get on your animal's skin and stain it sometimes this stain can be permanent even after your animal sheds and another thing is that honestly I personally don't trust this sand with the dyes in it just because I'm not sure how reptile safe the dye is and if your animal does go down to eat some of the sand I really don't want my animal eating a whole bunch of dye that's up to you whether you have your animal on this substrate or not but personally I don't really trust that um, another option for substrate is 50-50 sand and soil like maybe peat moss or coconut fiber mixed with sand half and half and this is a pretty good option because what will happen is your animal can dig around it can make burrows and one thing is, is that if your animal does swallow some of this it's not going to clump together like the sand shouldn't clump together in the stomach of your lizard because the sand is also surrounded by dirt and so whenever the sand and dirt are mixed it shouldn't clump together in your animal's stomach but then again if you do have an improper basking spot then your animal isn't going to be able to digest this properly and it's basically going to be useless to have this thinking that it's not going to clump together in your, anim in your animal's stomach because it will if you don't give it proper basking temperatures um, one other thing is walnut shells, like chipped up, crunched up walnut shells. Um, this is pretty good, except sometimes the walnut shells can be sharp and cut the skin of your animal, like for leopard geckos, in case if you've never touched one before, their skin is very soft, despite them having scales, kind of like toads, a little bit, how they're they look like they'd be really really rough but they're really soft actually um so with walnut shells depending on what type of animal you have it can cut the animal and if your animal eats this and it goes through the stomach and it cuts up the inside of your animal that's not gonna be good your animal's gonna have internal bleeding and probably end up coughing up blood and you're gonna be confused as to what's happening that's probably what would happen if you your animal eats some of the walnut shells is it's going to cut up the inside of your animal and it's going to have to cough up blood. Um, coconut fiber, like eco-earth and plantation soil and different things like that, that's actually a really good substrate option, except with desert animals like leopard geckos and uh, bearded dragons and things like that, those are more common animals, so I'm just going to refer to those more often than other animals. But anyways with um, eco-earth and 
plantation soil and all the other things, uh, coconut fiber is what it is. That stuff, whenever it gets wet, it holds humidity really good. And with desert animals, that's not really something you want, unless if it's in their humidity cave, which for my humidity cave, it's this lower one right here on this side. And so what'll happen is if your animal is native to a desert area and you have really humid cage, then what's gonna happen is your animal can end up getting a respiratory infection because there's so much humidity going down into its stomach that it'll mess with its lungs. And that's not a good thing. I'm not saying that just because you start seeing condensation on the side of the glass or anything like that, it's automatically going to give your animal a respiratory infection, but just if the humidity is always really high, you don't want that to happen. You don't really want the humidity to get hot very high at all, especially with leopard geckos and bearded dragons because they come from very arid environments. But you always need to have a humidity cave, especially for leopard geckos, just because they're, whenever they burrow and they go under the ground, it's humid under the ground, but not above the ground. So, um... The other thing with Eco Earth is if you do dry it out and you don't let a whole lot of water in it and it's very dry, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it gets very dusty with all the little extra pieces of Eco Earth and plantation soil and whatever coconut fiber you have. Whenever it gets really dusty, all the smaller pieces of it that are not like the larger pieces of the coconut fiber, all the little tiny pieces can like get up into the air and float around and they might get down your animal's nose and in its mouth if it opens its mouth a whole lot. Reptiles don't normally open their mouth. But if it goes down its nose whenever it's trying to breathe, if it gets too much down its nose, that's not good. It might stop breathing because it'll get all clogged up. Um, one other thing that a lot of people say is if it gets in their eyes, that's bad. But I'm not sure about bearded dragons or anything just because I've never owned bearded dragons before. But especially, I know for a fact that leopard geckos in the wild, whenever they get any dust in their eyes or anything, they'll lick their eyes like a windshield wiper. It's kind of funny, actually. But, um, so that's not a huge problem, especially for leopard geckos. For leopard geckos, if they do get it in their eye, that's not really bad, because they'll just lick it out. If it does get to the point where it's too dusty, and there's just dust floating on near, um, I do recommend spraying down the cage a little bit, like in the morning, and then letting the cage dry out throughout the day. But don't spray it too much, like I said. So if you do use coconut fiber, don't make it too humid, but make sure that the water, or that the soil is moist, that way it doesn't get too much dust in the air. Not too moist, actually, just enough to weigh down the dust. Um, one thing with my cage exact or my specific terrarium right here I for my soil I use the very bottom as a mixture of sand and coconut fiber and that spot stays really humid because of the sand and coconut fiber they both um, absorb water really good and so whenever all the whenever I spray the cage and water the plants and everything all the humidity will generally go and get all the water will get stuck down at the bottom which is a good thing for this cage and so if my animals do need to be in a more humid area like especially in my humidity cave they've dug like burrows going down into the humid areas of the substrate which is pretty cool actually they understood how there's different layers in here but anyways that's my bottom layer and then on top of that I've got a mixture of gravel and um excavator clay is what it's called it's by zoomed that product i do recommend very highly for all desert animals except for the ones like sandfish and stuff that love burrowing in the sand and everything but for almost all reptiles like bearded dragons and leopard geckos especially um those are really common so i'm going to talk about those a little bit more than the other animals but for bearded dragons and leopard geckos especially they come from very very rocky and rough areas of soil and so I recommend the excavator clay because what happens is it, you buy it and it's in like a bag and it's all just like it looks like sand I guess and then you dump it out and then you add water and then it'll clump together like clay and it's actually really really cool 
and the animals dig burrows in them and the burrows actually stay. The burrows don't collapse like sometimes with dirt and sand and stuff. I was with a friend a while ago, like a couple months ago, and he was getting his first leopard gecko and he was asking me questions and stuff about what types of stuff he should get for his leopard gecko in its cage. And I recommended the ZooMed excavator clay and I recommend that to any of you guys who are planning on getting a desert lizard, especially bearded dragons and leopard geckos, just because it's a lot more naturalistic, it mimics their natural environment how it should be, and that's always what you want your leopard gecko or whatever animal it is to have in their soil. You want it to m mimic how they actually, how their natural environment should be, because that's what will keep your animal healthy, and the health of your animal is the most important part about having an animal, is you want it to be very healthy. And so, um, that basically concludes my episode on substrates and impaction. So remember, impaction isn't something that will automatically happen just because you get sand or whatever, but rather something that will happen if you have improper husbandry. Make sure you have a hot side and a cold side to your cage. In this cage, that's my hot side, that's my cold side. You need to have the proper temperatures. If you have, if you do have a hot side and a cold side in your cage, and you go, oh, well, I have a hot side and a cold side, it's okay. You need to make sure that it's the right temperatures. <laughs> you can't just have one side like 120 degrees and the other like what, like 70 or whatever. Because depending on what type of animal you have, like if you have a Euromastix, that's good to have 120 degrees. But if you've got a leopard gecko, you're gonna kill it. So just make sure you do your research and always try to mimic the natural environment and thank you for watching and god bless you have a great day